morning, everybody. Welcome to Living Astrology with Janet Hickox. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea, sit back, and let's chat about what is going on up in the sky above us today, at least from an astrological standpoint. Uh, it is one of those days that just gives me pause, right? And I could feel it starting yesterday as I spent a good chunk of the day in irritation and upset over stupid things now that I look back, but it is always the sort of harbinger of things to come, I think, when I, I start to feel that way. And uh, that's, you know, kind of on what we have on tap today, this kind of, of crazy uh, energy that makes you feel a little bit out of sorts, maybe a lot out of sorts. It depends on how you personally deal with uh, the energies today. It's not like this is different, right? This is a day where we still have some of the same things that have been happening all along. And that's the, uh, the, the moon in a sign that tends to trigger the planets in Capricorn, the Jupiter, Pluto, Pallas, Athena, and uh, Chiriclo. They're all sort of balled up right now with Saturn and uh, Mars having moved off just a, a bit, right? They're moved off to the first early degrees of Aquarius. However, the moon today is sitting at the end of Cancer and getting ready to move into Leo. And Leo is a sign that is in opposition to Aquarius where Saturn and Mars are. So today the moon in Cancer early in the day uh, opposes Jupiter, Pluto, and Pallas Athena then moves into the void at uh, 9.50 a.m. my time. So that'll be about 12.50 p.m. for those of you on the East Coast. And is in that void until 11.27 a.m. West Coast, 2.27 a or p.m., excuse me, for you all on the East Coast. Then moves into the sign of Leo and immediately into an opposition with Saturn and Mars and then also a square to Uranus. So as I say that, I feel almost breathless inside because I can just sort of feel that these, these transits coming one after another, literally within a span of just a, you know several hours of the day can really create that whiplash feeling that we get. No wonder my neck hurts this morning. Um, the whiplash feeling that we can get uh, when the world goes just a little mad and a little crazy. So I'm going to check in over here on Facebook. Good morning, uh, Deb Johnson. Good morning, Londa. Great to see you. Allison, good morning. Great to see you too. I'm so glad you could make it today. And Elisa, great to see you. Anybody else who's out there that I haven't been able to say hi to yet, good morning and welcome. Uh, today we have a bit to talk about and I want to get to uh, our... Uh, wisdom stories from Rosie Aronson's book, the wisdom or the card deck book, uh, the wisdom keepers inner guidebook, because earlier in the week, the sun moved into the gate 21 and earth into the gate 48. Well, we haven't, we have talked about that a bit, but I want to be able to share the stories here uh, with you because I don't know that they're ones that we've had an opportunity to read before. So it'll be kind of fun. And then of course, we'll have the contemplation questions. Um, and Let's talk a little bit about what this morning is going to bring before the void of course moon. And actually it'll be this morning into early afternoon for those of you on the East Coast, where we have the moon in Cancer, a sign of home and family and comfort and uh, often protection and nurturing energy in an opposition to the planets that are in Capricorn right now. And that's Jupiter, Pallas and Pluto. Now, those three planets are coming together into an exact conjunction as we get into the weekend. They're already there by bullet burn standards. If I look at this right now, Jupiter's at 24 degrees, 35 minutes. Pluto's at 24 degrees, 52 minutes. Literally, they're just minutes apart. If I round up, they're both at, in, or they're both in a conjunction right now. And Pallas Athena is at 25 degrees. So really, if I rounded up Pluto at 2452, uh, and Jupiter at 25, uh, 435, they're really at 25 degrees, all three of them. So they're already in that conjunction, even though astrologers like it to be to the minute. I'm a little bit more, uh, it's there, right? Why not start talking about it? So it is on Saturday when they come into an exact conjunction, but that 
energy is already there for us. There is huge transformation energy afoot. And you only need to look at one news story in the, in, you know, there's unemployment numbers transforming our economy our economy. There is the stock market and now mortgages are being uh, called into question. Uh, so the economy is taking that hit. Um, the government is in a tizzy, right? It, it, it's almost like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. And it's all mixed up and crazy. And about the only voice of reason that we have out there is Dr. Fauci, who is a doctor of all things. Um, so we have these crazy things that are going on in our institutions, which are represented by the Pluto or by the energies that planets in Capricorn. So really what we have is the moon now really calling us to uh, our foundation, to home, right? That's where we're safe. That is where we have our stay home, stay healthy thing going on. And we also have the North Node in the sign of cancer. So all along over these past 18 months, it has been about bringing us more home and into uh, a connection more fully with our families, with our homes and our foundations, the things that really support us, where we can put our roots down and really hold fast, even in the midst of this storm that is uh, the outer world at this moment. So today may feel a little bit like we're being pulled and stretched again, right? Oppositions are 180 degree angles from one another, a line, right? Opposition across from one another and pulling us in two different directions. So we may feel internally like I don't have the time or the money to be able to stay home because I got to work. I got a family to feed. And so we may, you know, take risks by going out and doing things that we know we shouldn't do. We may be getting that feeling of being housebound or what's that cabin fever at this point. So we are kind of pulled between our normal routine life out in the big wide world represented by Capricorn and our home life where it's safe and secure uh, for us being represented by cancer. So we're being pulled in half. Now, the last aspect this morning before the moon goes into the void is a sextile with Venus. And that, it, it's funny because last night, oh, I don't know, I ended up doing this for I, maybe an hour. Um, I found... I don't even know how I found it, some kind of an app uh, on my phone that I could color. You know how I love to color when I'm upset or nervous or tense. Um, so I have color books and I have, you know, pens, but I was kind of cozed up and cozied up in my, in my recliner and my blankie. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'm just going to play a game with my daughter. I looked and there was this app that you can color online, like a game that you can color. So I must have sat there for the next hour coloring pictures uh, online. So it's that connection that we have to beauty right now, the, the beautification of something. And what's more beautiful than to see a blank page turn into bright colors, right? So that last, that sextile to Venus, the last aspect before we go into uh, the void, takes us into maybe a, an exploration of beauty, looking for harmony, looking for peace, maybe, you know, taking a, a a stroll outside. It's kind of chilly here today. I don't know if I can do that until later in the day, you know, where you can just uh, be a part of the natural beauty of your surroundings or in the absence of being able to go and do that, creating something of beauty with your own hands, with your own mind and your own creativity, uh, whether that is something of art, whether that is something of like a craft, whether that is something like cleaning out a closet. And yesterday my daughter cleaned out her pantry. And uh, that was a mess, but it, I'm sure in the end, it turned out really beautiful. So there's lots of things that we can do to beautify our homes or to harmonize in our homes. And that's what we're left with as we go into the void. Now, the void is a relatively short one, thankfully, right? Sometimes I just, that void goes, drives me nuts because I feel like I'm spinning my wheels and I can't get going and but there's no traction, right? It's like trying to get going in the mud or, you know, in a dream when you're running, you're trying to run or get away from something in a dream and it just feels like you're slogging through peanut butter. That's kind of the feeling that the void of course moon brings us. And we are in that void, like I said, from 9.50 a.m., so 10 to 10 to 11.27 on the West Coast. And a little bit later for the East Coast, it'll be your, what's that, 12.50, so 10 to 1 until 2.27 p.m. And for you all in Europe, you're kind of missing the daytime aspect of this. It'll be more into your evening time.
And then the moon will move into with all the gusto and excitement of a Leo drama into the sign of Leo, where it will come into an immediate opposition to the planets Saturn and Mars that are still very close to one another. Saturn today is at zero degrees, 40 minutes, and Mars at one degree, 55 minutes. Literally, they are still pretty much on top of one another. And the moon moving into Leo sets up that opposition energy because the opposing sign to Leo is Aquarius, right? So I hope you guys are understanding sort of the mechanics of this. So if you wanted to point to where is this happening in your own personal chart, what you want to do is look for, first, you can look for two different things. One, you can look for where Capricorn and Aquarius are in your chart. Let me see if I can share my screen here. Um, and I can show you what those symbols look like. There's that. And chart, I mean, share. <laughs> My mind is moving in a million directions today. Okay, so what you should be seeing here is the chart of the moment. This is what I drew up this morning, my time 704. And uh, so things have moved just a titch since then, but we still get the idea here. The part of your chart that you could really look to right now is right here on the cusp between Capricorn, which looks like the number 76, and Aquarius, which looks like the little waves. And right here, you see the planet Mars and Saturn very close together in Aquarius. And then we see Chiriclo, Pallas Athena, Pluto, and Jupiter all right on top of one another. In fact, I mean, they're spread apart in the house here just because the symbols take up more space than the little tick marks do where they are. But look at this tick mark. This is all of them sitting right there together. <laughs> so well, this is where your chart is under pressure, you could say, or where the moon by opposition down here right now at 27 degrees or 28 degrees of Cancer is in an opposition to those planets, having set us up to feel the difference between these two very different signs and the energies that they bring to us. And it, it's interesting to see visually what this looks like. So tonight, if uh, you're able to look out at the moon, wherever you find that moon in your in your mind's eye, just just take a peek at where a good chunk of the universe is in terms of the planets lined up at the opposite end, right? And it, it would you won't be able to see all of them, certainly, but it's just an interesting way to look at the night sky. So here's Capricorn, here's Aquarius. Now down here, this is what Cancer is, uh, looks like a crab or 69 laying on its side. And then Leo right here, this is where the moon goes next and where it will oppose Mars and Saturn. So it could be an interesting day. It, it almost is... Uh, it's almost like you could see the people versus the government or the masses or community, the people, just quotes, the people versus the institutions uh, lined up right here. All right, so that's enough of that. Uh, let me go back over here to Facebook, see who else is checking in. Good morning, Kamal. Love from Pakistan. Kamal, I sent you your charts yesterday and my bad when I looked at your chart or when I looked at the time, I saw five, for whatever reason, I chose 1700 and not 5 a.m. So I've changed your chart for you. I think I did a little bit of an explanation for that. So my apologies for that for you, for the confusion. Uh, but it does seem like a lot of the planets for you, Kamal, are focused in the sixth house, which represents the physical body. So you may be dealing with the possibility of health issues right now. Maybe you're a doctor or you're studying to be a doctor, a nurse, uh, uh, somebody else in the healthcare industries. And that's where a lot of, of your energy is focused right now. Um, maybe focused on your own health routines. But that house is also the house of work and service. So it may be dawning on you at this point in time. Uh, about how it is that you want to serve in the world. And there may also be, this is so interesting because the opposite side of the sixth house is the 12th house. <clears throat> and then the 12th house is often a place where the things are hidden from us, where we have hidden fears or blocks or limitations. And those may be coming up for you right now, even with your Saturn return in play, where it's time for you to release those things and really be the man that you're meant to be, be the person that you're meant to be, and you know, really start to show up in your world in some way, shape, or form. And if you have other questions about that, please feel free to uh, ask. 
uh, as I feel a little bad that we got kind of twisted up with our times yesterday. Good morning, Amy Moore. It's great to see you. She says Capricorn and Aquarius in the fifth house for me. Well, the fifth house is the house of creativity and joy and play and children. It's a Leo house. Isn't that interesting that it's opposite of the, the sign that rules it or the sign that rule or the planet, the sign that rules the fifth house is opposite of what you have in your chart. So a lot of focus right now must be on your creative energies. What are you creating uh, in your work or in your life? Um, how are you finding fun in, in desperate times or in irritating times? So that's a lot of the focus for you. Um, Allison and Debbie says, I haven't gone to sleep yet, up all night. Oh no, Angela Mather Keel, good morning, catching a little bit today. Angela, I just fell in love yesterday with your daughter's laughter. It just made my day. I got to tell you, yesterday was a very tense day for me. After we got off air here, uh, I started hearing noise outside and there were people out there botching up the tree behind me. I have this lovely dug fir behind me. Uh, and it was intermingled with a couple of others over the years. You could tell the one has a giant, I, I mean, I don't even know if I could put my arms all the way around the trunk. And they were cutting down some of that tree. So get this. So the neighbor can not be shaded on her deck. The one behind me. It's not even her freaking tree. But they, the owners of the land agreed to let them do that. So first of all, I'm disturbed because these people are out here doing this kind of work and it's non-essential, which means they're in violation of the stay home, stay healthy rules. And they were messing with my tree, which I've adopted that tree, and that pissed me off. And then I was mad because my daughter still has not gotten her COVID-19 test back yet. Today is eight days. How are we ever, ever going to bring this in under any kind of control if we cannot get people's test results sooner than that? Luckily, she's in the healthcare field and she knew, right? She knew better. She knew that even the thought, the whisper of having something like that meant I should stay away from people. But in the meantime, her family is exposed to it and they're going to work in school, not school, but going off to work. And who knows, right? They're spreading this like wildfire while we're dawdling around. So that irked me yesterday as well. It was like all these things yesterday were just up in my face. Everything I tried to do just fell apart. Uh, I was like, oh my God. So I left. I left my house and went for a long walk. I got 11,000 steps in on that walk. That was probably over five miles. That is more than five miles. And by the time I got home, uh, I, I had shifted that energy. And then I come home and my neighbors are all making so much noise. I couldn't even go back to work, right? They're mowing their lawn. Who mows their lawn in March? I mean, or it's April, I guess. Uh, and motorcycle riding. I'm like, oh my God, this is going to piss me off even more. So I had to get my headset on and listen to beautiful music. So I think sometimes I get that irritating feeling first, like I knew that that was probably signaling what today's energy was going to be all about. So you might have to cope with irritation in new and creative ways today. That might mean you have to get your headset on and just like block out the world around you or go for a, a walk doing whatever it is that you can do to break that energy. Um, and I got to tell you, Angela, that little girl's laughter broke that energy for me yesterday. So thank you for posting that. I just happened to go to Facebook and saw uh, her, laughed it, her laughter and it just was awesome. So thanks. Um, okay. So, uh, oh my goodness, the trees. I know. Why do people move to the freaking Pacific Northwest only to cut down the trees? I mean, really go back to California deserts if you don't like the trees, really. It just makes me so upset. I mean, I get trimming them, but trimming is a non-essential thing and shouldn't have even been, there shouldn't have even been those extra four people behind my house. Uh, and when I say behind my house, I'm only talking maybe six feet from my back door. And, oh, anyway, don't get me started. I'm not going there. Now, let's switch over to what Leo brings us. Leo energy changes things up for us in a few hours. Woohoo! We can get into some Leo energy because the moon will be moving into the sign of Leo. And Leo energy is about self-expression primarily. It is about how we show up 
uh, in our world. And it's about our passion, the passion that we have as individuals to share our message, to share our gifts, to be seen, to be heard, to be valued, to be recognized, to be loved. It is also a sign of love and it is also drama. <laughs> So there's all the drama, all the passion, all the love, and all this creative energy. And I think part of the frustration is how do we express that creativity when we're kind of in this lockdown space? Um, I thought this morning, oh, I want to go, wait, I can't go. I wanted to go buy plants, right? I thought I was going to use my artistic expression today to plant and get some really pretty flowers and spruce up my deck, you know, get it ready for summer. Uh, but there was that hanging butt, right? We can go out to get groceries. I'm not sure that buying plants was a part of the plan. Uh, so there was that, uh, that kind of ca caught me off guard, that wanting to self-express, to wanting to do something fun and exciting, and then realizing, oh, damn, that's not possible. So having to uh, funnel our energies into other creative things that we can do, either at home or you know, without a bunch of other people around us. Um, so here's some ideas I thought of. Create your own celebration, right? Fun and games is a part of the Leo energy. Get online with a friend, maybe do a dance party. Uh, have you ever watched Grey's Anatomy, the early days when, uh, uh, what was her name? Uh, the, the, the Chinese girl, oh my God, Sandra Oh, is that her name? I don't know. Anyway, when she and... Uh, uh, Dr. Gray, they would get and they would do dance parties, right? When they got irritated with the hospital or whatever was going on, they'd just break out into all this dance and, you know, do this. Well, do that, right? You could do that. You could get online with your best friend or your sisters or your, your cousins, whatever, your, your friends, get online and just do a dance party, right? Do a celebration, a celebration of, hey, we don't have to be taken out by uh, a little tiny virus and the circumstances of the world. We can still play. Maybe get on, do some gaming with somebody or, uh, you know, do create something of beauty that you can do. There's th this energy of Leo also brings up vacation and a lot of people's vacations have had to be canceled. My own daughter was going on a cruise. It got canceled or rescheduled and now it's been canceled for this. The reschedule isn't going to happen either. And uh, so we can't really go somewhere on a typical vacation, but I'll tell you what, there's a really cool show on Netflix called Extraordinary Homes. And they take you on this trip around the world to different places where people have built these extraordinary homes. You get to see uh, different lands. You get to see these beautiful homes and the decorations that they use. So find something like that. There's all of the planet earth, uh, movies on Netflix. Uh, what was the other one that I just watched? Oh, now I don't remember the name of it, but it was uh, a couple of chefs that traveled around the world and uh, to restaurants that were failing and they helped spruce up the restaurant, bring in new foods. But again, you're traveling around the world without moving. It's really kind of cool, right? Your mind gets to take get taken away on a vacation of sorts. The one thing that I'm a little worried about with the moon in Leo for the next few days is that it has a tendency to take risks. This is not the time to do that. This is not the time to take unnecessary risks just for the sake of exhilaration or feeling alive. Refrain from that if all possible, right? Take risks in other ways, right? Risk watching a show that you haven't watched before, going, you know, and doing some gardening if you can, but don't take those unnecessary risks. This is also a sign about the drama of love, right? Being happy together, being in a closed in space together and trying not to tear out each other's throats, right? <laughs> Surprising one another with gifts, uh, being uh, surprised by uh, the things that are happening in your world, um, indulging a bit maybe in luxuries, take a bubble bath, light some wonderful candles if you want to, you know, do something that changes up the atmosphere of your home, uh, of shaking up your relationship maybe in some ways. By the way, tomorrow, I'm not sure if I'm going to be on air. Tomorrow is my 38th wedding anniversary and my husband has taken the day off so I'm not sure if I'll be here in the morning or not but 38 years I'm going to be celebrating 38 years holy cow with one person and I would do another 38 years easily with that same person it's an amazing feeling being together with someone for more than half of your life and uh, still wanting to be with that person for that amount of time and I feel so 
loved and uh, grateful that that has been my experience in this relationship. So be willing to treat one another tomorrow, today, and the next day as the center of your universe, right? Making them feel loved and, and comforted and cozy and the center of your attention. Uh, we respond to that, right? It is how we, you know, just being able to embrace someone often changes up that energy. And I know that's been sort of cut off for us as well in some, resist, in some respects, but it doesn't mean that you can't give a cosmic hug, right? Or a, uh, a distance hug um, or the people that live in your world that are in your house, certainly, you know, bring them in, make them the center of your world, show them how much you love them and show them how much you care. Watch out for the ego taking over with Leo energy. The moon and Leo, ego oriented Leo can sometimes uh, exaggerate the more selfish natures that some people have. We may see some things and we just go, oh my God, there goes the ego, the arrogance, the narcissism, all of that can be out there uh, where it's plain for us to see. And we want to take out, we want to watch out that we don't try to win something at someone else's expense. Uh, again, I'm, those are just things to watch out for. The, anything ego driven with Leo is a possibility. All right. Questions, comments. Okay. What time is it? 830. We're doing good. Natasha, good morning to you. Happy anniversary. I'm grateful that you feel loved. Um, I, I wish that for everybody. Deb says, happy, happy, happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, it's weird that our anniversary this year is going to be weird, right? I, we usually go out to dinner and do some kind of celebration instead. Uh, I don't think he's going to watch this video this morning, but I'm going to make him a wonderful dinner tomorrow. And um, we'll just have to celebrate at home. What else can we do, right? We can find things to do, no doubt. Uh, anyway, so I think we were going to go for a bike ride tomorrow too. Um, I don't know how many years now, 10, 11, 11 years I've been living on this island. I found a spot yesterday that I'd never been to. I can't even believe that. I mean, this isn't that big of an island, right? You can drive from one end to the other in like five minutes. And I, uh, I saw that and I went, oh my God, I didn't even know that was there because I dare, I was so, you know, irritated with the day yesterday that I was just walking, walking, walking. And I just walked into this different uh, part of the island and uh, I want to go explore that some more today, or uh, maybe we'll do that tomorrow because today's kind of icky. Um, but it was amazing, right, to have experiences. Sometimes if you just get out of your own way, the universe will present you with something fun and awesome and auspicious. Uh, Debbie, have a picnic. Yeah. You, did I tell you what the temperature is here right now? It's 34. Um, my husband ran into snow on the way to work today, which was weird um, because it's not snowing where I am, but down by the, on the flats, it was snowing. And then he went from snow to rain and then from, you know, that to clouds. So <laughs> it's probably not the best time for a picnic, but maybe tomorrow will be better. This, you know, wait five minutes and the weather changes. That's true here. Very true here in Washington. Um, okay, so let's take a look now at the Pleiadian Earth energy for the day. It is an interesting day today because it's tricky even from the astrology as we've just talked about, but it's also tricky from the point of view of the Pleiadian Earth energy. And remember, the Pleiadian energy is about our evolution. So the week, the day by day and the 13 day week leads us on a voyage, really the spiral of consciousness. And when we begin the one, right, the one is the umbrella energy for the whole of the week, while each day during the week brings up the next level that we're learning in that spiral. So the umbrella this time was about feelings, right, emotions and how we react or we respond to what is showing up in our world. Well, today we've reached the 11 and the 11 universal day is about illumination, light, right? That sounds really good. Uh, the earth energy for the day is catalyzing energy. Now, catalyzing energy in the Mayan calendar was represented by the thunderstorm, which was called Kuayak. It was the storm, it was thunder, it was lightning, it was kind of the boom from above, right? And in that was this catalyzing energy. And, you know, as anybody who's lived through a thunderstorm or a heavy storm, right, that breaks maybe the summer heat, 
uh, how refreshing it can be afterwards, right? From the, the fury of the storm, the wind, the rain, the, the thunder, the lightning comes the next day where the air smells fresh and new. And uh, even your plants or your grass looks like it's just, you know, energized because of the storm. So that is the kind of energy we have today on the earth is this catalyzing energy that's meant to clear the storm. So let's break this down a little bit more. So the 11 energy, the universal energy of the day illuminating is about bringing a new awareness into our beingness to see reality in a different way or to see the real reality. Um, you know, reality, what is reality? I guess on a day like this where illumination is possible, the, that reality is in the eyes of the beholder often, which means that it's also changeable right? That changeable reality. It's not set in stone. The energy of 11 also lights our way through the negative energies that we're experiencing. And then as we are doing that, we're gaining a greater perspective of uh, the larger truth at play in the universe. And this is about our having an awareness of what we need to release within us that doesn't fit the view of our future. So if we have a future that we want to see of prosperity and of uh, relationships that are loving and uh, financial abundance, that type of thing, what do we have to release within us? What belief may be, actions that we're taking, um, thoughts that we have to release in order to be free of that, to, to be able to move into that new awareness. Whatever doesn't fit, we have to release, right? And then when we resist releasing what no longer fits, that's where we come into the pain. We come right up against the pain body. That might be in your physical body where you feel physical pain. It could be more in the emotional body. It could be mental. Uh, it could even be spiritual pain. Uh, and that should be your, your sort of uh, siren call that your thoughts are on the wrong thing or that you're refusing to resist or you're resisting something, refusing to let go of something. And it's time to make a change. Now, catalyzing energy, of course, is here to help us make that change, but it can bring a day of challenges, of drama, of difficulties that, that brings our creative energy up. So uh, I noticed Debbie Tibbetts Tumiel sent me a quick text this morning, and I, I really didn't get to read it yet, Debbie, but uh, uh, something about two drugs that have been, uh, oh wait, there it is. What does it say here? Two antibiotics found to kill the coronavirus, which I find is extraordinary as in typically antibiotics do not work on viruses. So uh, that'll be an interesting article to read, but it is about where we find our ways of being creative in even in the throes of drama. So we may yet have more dramas or difficulties to, and challenges to go through, but it triggers something within us, right? That human capacity to be creative, to rise to the challenge. And that's what a day like today brings. It is also a day that is a cosmic force for unity and uh, rapidly transforms then our world uh, in order to make way for a rebirth. Well, I would say that everything that we've been experiencing over these past several weeks is all about transformation leading to a rebirth, right? Something new. What more is possible, right? What more is possible? Now, there's a caveat here for the day, something that we have to be very aware of that as soon as I realized I needed to be aware of it, I, I found myself like already in, in the wrong place because today... Thoughts, words, actions can quickly catalyze change around us. So we have to watch carefully what we're thinking about, what we're uh, focusing our attention on, what actions we are taking. You know, here's a, a quote from Pia Orlean in the, um, let me show it to everybody, the Pleiadian Earth Energy Astrology, right? Pia Orlean and uh, the, the group that they, and she and her husband, Colin Baird Smith, they, they channel a group called LARCMA. And here's a quote, a single sentence thoughtlessly uttered may bring changes that were never intended. Thus is the power of today, right? This day. And this is also energy that awakens us from the sleepwalking that we've been in, right? We have, as humans, just been sleepwalking through our world uh, stressing and straining over things that are of no real importance or lasting beauty or quality. 
and uh, all of that we are being woken up from at this moment in time. So a great day. Yes, it isn't that it's so horrible, but we definitely are going to have to be a little more aware today. And where are we focusing? You know, what's our focus on? What is, you know, what dramas are we focused on? You know how, I don't know, they always say if it bleeds, it leads right in the news. How many of us go chasing down the good news for the day? Um, how many of us turn on the news and hear and get, you know, uh, absorb all of that negative stuff, right? That, I mean, it's not positive out there right now, but they could turn it around. And in some cases, I, I've heard really good news stories as well. But I think we have to go more looking for that. It's not like readily available to us, but that's because if it bleeds, it leads, right? We have this human need for drama. Uh, but let's see if we can't focus on positive dramas instead of the negative dramas for the day. All right, I'm going to go back, check for questions. Uh, let's see. Oh, that was yesterday's video. Great. Uh, Londa, we are ambassadors of cosmic love. I love that. Gail, good morning to you. Londa says, hey, God. God says, hello. God, elite, Londa says, I'm falling apart. Can you put me back together? Oh, this is a whole lot longer than I thought. Me, why? God, because you aren't a puzzle. Me, what about all the pieces of my life that are falling down onto the ground? Um, so Londa posted this here in the chat. So I'm going to just let everybody else uh, read that because I think it's probably pretty fun. And uh, I love this saying, God says, I keep telling you, you aren't changing, you are becoming. I love it. Okay, Londa, thanks for posting that. Uh, so it's a longer um, thing. So everybody take a look at that later. In the meantime, because I'm running short on time here already, I want to go to our stories. Thank you, by the way, Londa. That was awesome. And anybody else? Um, hard to go out to dinner. I know. You just had your anniversary too? That's cool. Maybe we got married in 1982. So yeah, that is 38 years, right? Yeah, 38 years. Awesome. Congratulations to you too, Londa. Okay, guys, here we go. Let's take a look at the energy of control, the shadow of control. First of all, let me show you the card. And in this is where the sun is sitting. And here we have, look at his face. I'm, 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 I'm thralled, enthralled with faces. You, know, you guys know that. I, I tell you that all the time. Look at his face or look at her face. And if this is the gate 21 on your human design or the gene key 21, if you're a gene keys follower, and it is the energy of authority. And that is the gift in this gate, as opposed to the shadow energy, which is control. And the highest energy of this gate is, let's see, we move from uh, the energy of control through authority and on into valor. So here's our story. Ultimately, the only ones who will be given positions of control will be those who have given up being in control. Giving up being in control. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? So here's the wisdom story. I was a trust fund baby. While my dad disappeared behind closed doors with business moguls and ruled the world, my mother ruled the household with her perfectly manicured nails and social graces. As they raised me, they were controlling and critical, and I was submissive. I cringed at the way they treated our servants, whom I suspected secretly despised my parents as much as I did. The moment I got my driver's license, I grabbed some cash and bolted, leaving my parents and my trust fund in the dust. I had no plan, no college education. All I cared about was being free of their stuffy, oppressive world. So I worked odd jobs, went with the flow, and reveled in the fact that I no longer represented the imperious elite. But when my financial cushion ran out, so did my sense of adventure. Too humiliated to beg my parents to take me back, I lived in my car behind our house, eating the food that was thrown away. One of the servants found me there and insisted on taking me in. Her family had almost nothing but gave me everything. I was grateful and humbled. I realized how bitter and selfish I'd become, how deeply I resented my parents for their narrowness and selfishness, at society for ignoring the needy, and more importantly, at myself for being too weak and pathetic to help myself, much less anyone else. 
I'd become so obsessed about money, or I mean, I become as obsessed about money as my father and as disconnected from the real world as my mother. If I truly wanted my life to be useful, I'd have to take the responsibility for it. From that point, my heart took over. I became driven by deep desire to give back to this family and to serve those in need. I got my act together, re-engaged with the world, and eventually reconciled with my parents. Instead of rejecting the, their resources, I inspired them to recognize the humanity of the people who worked for them. My parents are now the biggest financial supporters of my efforts to give homes to the homeless, bring gardens to food deserts, and represent people whose voices have not been heard. The more my heart opens, the more loyalty I inspire in the most unlikely places. Here's my gift to you. I come to share that true power has nothing to do with money or control. True power is about speaking and acting from the heart and grounding all that you do in a deep desire to serve. Becoming the true authority in your own life requires both that you surrender and that you rise up to meet whatever life brings your way with enthusiasm, gratitude, and a deep sense of responsibility. You will know that you are owning your authority when you inspire loyalty and connectivity wherever you go. When everyone you represent, no matter what role they play, feels empowered, impassioned, and respected, it is time to listen deeply to the will of the groups in your life and act sincerely on their behalf. It is time to become the trustworthy person I know you can be. And here are our questions for contemplation, which, of course, I will post up here for you later. It says, where in your life do you feel controlled? Hmm. How might the fear of being controlled be running your life or influencing the decisions you make? Are you so afraid of misusing your power that you're not using it at all? In what relationships do you tend to be controlling or submissive? Think back to your best relationships. What were the conditions that made you feel safe enough to surrender, to own your own authority? Where in your life can you surrender even more? Wow cool stories, right? So that's our son at the gate 21. And uh, checking to see if there are any comments. Angela, oh my gosh, thinking so much about that dynamic lately control, authority, responsibility, surrender and power. Indeed, it's up, right? It's up. Uh, we all have, by the way, I, I, maybe I don't say this enough, but we all have all of the human design, all of the gene keys, they're all there within us. In some people, they have these gates turned on, essentially defined means turned on. And then in others, it is open. It's still there, right? You just experience it differently. An open center experiences the energy through other people, through the outer world or through transits of planets. And the people who have it defined are broadcasting that to people out in the world. So we're all in this together kind of thing. That's what you see in human design. So we all have all of the human design. So all of us, even though we may not have control or uh, this gate of 20 or 21 defined, we're still, you know, behaving in a world where that's apparent, right? Where control is a part of our world. It's a part of our life. And I would encourage everybody to get the Gene Keys book. Mine looks different than yours, Will, but here's the Gene Keys book because you can take a look at these things even deeper, right? You can take them into a deeper uh, a view of what's going on at the gate 21. And because you do have it, you may not be expressing it the same way uh, as someone who has it defined, but you definitely have it. And right now it is, it has become defined for you as the sun is sitting there. So the shadow of control, this is called the noble life. And it is in the codon ring of humanity, which means this is a very human struggle that shows up here in this gene key. So the gene keys by Richard Rudd, excellent book. One you do not read cover to cover, you read it as a contemplation uh, of whatever it is that is showing up in your world. Okay. What else? What else can I talk about today? Anybody have any questions, comments? Uh, where are you lost? Uh, where do you uh, need some guidance? Um, I'm willing to do that for you this morning a little bit as we are kind of all in this, you know, planet together here and all of us feeling the effects of all of these transits. 
Um, and if you don't think that you're feeling the effects of these transits, guess again, right? They're there in your chart as well. You don't get to be, uh, uh, you know, not affected by what's going on. We are all like I said, in this together. While I'm waiting to see if anybody has questions, I think what I'm going to do is go to the earth. Because the earth, remember, is sitting at a gate of fear, um, the gate 48. I got to go back to zoom here for a minute so I can show the card. Here is the gate 48 resourcefulness. And I'm sorry, my light there, my light ring is kind of making this glary. But she's got this beautiful face. Look at that owl right there in the uh, uh, third eye. Wisdom, right? Wisdom. And what is that above the owl? It looks like a dream catcher, right? A dream catcher. If I bring that in, you can see that better. So here we have the gift of resourcefulness at the gate 48. Let's read the wisdom story here. All right. Now, the... Um, the shadow of the gate 48, remember, or when fear is taking hold, it's the shadow of inadequacy. In the gift, it is resourcefulness, and in its highest um, expression, it's wisdom. And it says, if we don't know how to handle emotional states with equanimity, integrity, and clarity, we never fully enter adulthood, but remain on, at some level, children. Here's the wisdom story. My father was an idealistic young man who was willing to sacrifice his life for our country. He admired the bravery, cooperation, and loyalty he experienced during the war almost as much as he hated the way he and his fellow soldiers were received after it ended. He felt dropped and forgotten by the very people for whom he gave everything and manipulated by the government had, he had served with such devotion. By the time I was halfway through elementary school, he was a bitter, paranoid, and unscrupulous man. When he wasn't obsessing over conspiracy theories and spying on the government, he was unleashing his anger at me, constantly criticizing me for being undisciplined and unattractive. My mother was consumed with making ends meet, running the household and keeping up appearances. All she wanted was for me to do well in school and look good so that the neighbors wouldn't notice what was happening behind closed doors. As my sense of unworthiness grew, I found myself glued to the television, watching soap operas filled with beautiful people and commercials that flaunted perfect women who were gorgeous, successful, seductive all at once. In comparison, I felt unbearably bland. As I entered puberty, the pressure I felt to look, act, and perform well increased. I became obsessed with my appearance, grades, and getting into the best college. I couldn't sleep before tests. Desperate to fill the void in my belly and calm my nervous system, I binged and purged with food. It wasn't until I was in high school, thanks to a wonderful English teacher who encouraged me to write about my most private pain, that I came to understand how my life had been hijacked by a deep sense of inadequacy. My teacher didn't just see my suffering, she saw a depth, a sensitivity, and wisdom in me I didn't even know was there. She kept pulling it out of me. I have her to thank for the way my life unfolded as I blossomed into a young woman, came to trust my inner knowing and fell in love with earth-based spirituality. Today, I sleep peacefully and have the great honor of facilitating emotionally and spiritually healing rites of passage for seven to 14 year olds. Every day I am inspired and amazed by the inner resources of these kids. My gift to you. Do not hide from the well of darkness within you, for there is light and boundless riches at the bottom of that well. You can find elegant solutions to all of life's challenges and just the right support when you need it most. But first, you must reassure your body that it is safe, even when you don't have all of the answers. Let the parent in you love and hold the child within, even in the presence of fear. Over time, you will spontaneously dive into the void and discover more warmth there than you ever expected. Trust your inner knowing and the people around you will start dipping into your well and drawing out more resourcefulness and wisdom than you realize you had. You are far more adequate than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> nice. Questions for contemplation. What is your relationship to fear? Do you tend to repress it and avoid your fear? Or do you tend to act it out or react to it? Where do you feel most inadequate? How does 
not feeling good enough impact your thoughts, feelings, and actions? Do people tend to feel intimidated or inadequate around you? Who in your life has truly seen your wisdom and pulled it out? Think of a time you experienced or expressed your wisdom. Write down 10 of your greatest inner resources. Notice the feelings and thoughts that arise as you do this. That's a really positive thing to do. And trust me, you have the time, right? You have the time. Except if you're a parent and you have kids running around at home that you're trying to teach at the same time they're out of school, <laughs> then you might not have as much time. But even you could probably eke out five minutes to notice or write down 10 of your greatest inner resources and notice how the feelings and thoughts around those resources make you feel. All right. Sounds like a good idea, right? Okay, everybody. Let's see. Amy. Oh boy, this story is so relatable today. I have been pulling a worthiness oracle card for myself also. Guess I better listen. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Angela says my natal Mars at 22 Capricorn is my first house and has been getting walloped lately with all these major transits of Pluto, Saturn, Mars, South Node, indeed. Um, and the 22nd degree for you will also get hit when Jupiter and Pluto, Pallas and Saturn retrograde. And uh, that'll happen in June, I believe it. So uh, usually what happens, Angela, of course, is those planets move across a point and trigger something. And then they go retrograde and they're moving backwards across a point. And then maybe that takes it inside and there's a shift that occurs for you on the inner planes. And then later when they move forward again, they'll come back across that same point, but this time in an empowered way. So it's a process of, you could think of it as the destruction and the, the, the cleaning up of the mess and then the, the reconstruction. So it's happening in your first house. So you personally are being reconstructed, deconstructed and reconstructed. So that's a, an interesting thing to uh, have going on right now. Debbie Tibbetts Tumiel, can you tell me where in my chart all this is affecting me? You know, I don't have a clue. <laughs> Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. So I've got to think about this for a minute. I got to think about where your rising sign is. I do believe, Debbie, that this is happening in your second house. But if you don't mind, I think what I'll do to answer that question better is pull up a chart for you. So one moment while I close this out, and I'm going to do that for you. Um, so for, for you, it should be across the second and the eighth house. That would be a financial uh, and resource sort of part of your chart. And... Tibbets to me. Oh, there you are. Oh, and your birthday's coming up. I sent you the link, by the way, to schedule that. Um, let's look at the transits. Okay. And Debbie, in just a minute, I'll share the chart. There we go. Let me go back to Zoom here. Share. All right, Deb, this is your chart. And I'm going to make it just a titch bigger. Zoom it up. Okay, so right here, this is where Capricorn is in your chart, Debbie, and it is, uh, like I remembered, across the second house. So here's Capricorn, here is Aquarius, and you can see the split here. This is where Pallas, Jupiter, and Pluto are in the second house, almost uh, very close to your natal Chiron. And then on the other side of the dividing line here into Aquarius is where Saturn and Mars are. And again, they're very close to as well to your Chiron um, that is in the second house. So there's, and you know, you're past your, your Chiron return. So I'm not so sure it's about the wounding for you as it is that you are holding some wisdom that you can share to help others moving through fears around finances or fears around scarcity or abundance. So that may be a really good place for you to focus, helping others to see that this too shall pass. Over here at this end, up here, if you can see me twirling around here, this is Cancer and this is Leo. And they are really in your eighth house. And this is where you may be getting hit by uh, finances that have to do with things that you share with maybe the government or with investments or um, uh, annuities, the places where you receive money from someone else, like a spouse or, um, you know, 
tax credits or what, what else, income tax refunds, that kind of thing. So uh, this, this is across your, your houses of money. Both of these are very powerful money houses. Um, but the trick is not to go into fear, right? This is all about just reassembling. Um, maybe there are new places to put money that you hadn't thought about before. And uh, I haven't checked my app lately about Bitcoin. I, I have no clue whether Bitcoin is doing well or not, but that's a, you know, a possibility that our economy changes over into some other form of money. And that maybe you're at the beginning of that. So the changes for you are occurring across that second and that eighth house. And of course, your uh, natal sun is getting closer and closer to your, uh, or your transiting sun getting closer and closer to your natal uh, sun at three degrees of, of Taurus, where Uranus has been sitting, right? Uranus is about five degrees today, um, bringing up changes, bringing up the changes and and how you find joy and play and pleasure in your life. So, and love in your life as well. So there's a lot going on in your chart here. Uh, there's a lot going on in everybody's chart. So Debbie, it doesn't mean that you're just kind of weird because you have so much going on, but yours have your your houses happen to be wide enough uh, that they are kind of, that these energies are kind of all included in just one house. Where in other people's charts, they're sort of straddling two different areas of your life. Uh, for you right now, it's across that financial self worth, being adequate right? The, the inadequacy thing is a possibility here where you don't feel good enough to go out there and do your card readings or, uh, you know, really embrace your medium tendencies, your medium uh, gifts, your gifts at being a medium. So uh, I would say it's time for you to bust through all of that self-worth stuff, let it go and, uh, you know, be the light that you are meant to be for people. So there you have it. Uh, okay, stop sharing that. I hope that helps you, Debbie. I know it's kind of tricky right now for everybody, but it looks good to me. Uh, wow, great cards today. Very triggered today with these topics. I'm also Capricorn rising, very aware of this restructuring that's needed. In, indeed. So let me just say that I think, I, I really believe that we've likely come through the worst just when I say that, and that what's left for us to do is to rebuild, right? And to rebuild on more solid ground. And that is for us personally, right? As well as for us as a, a, a community or as a, a nation or as a globe, right? That we're all in this together. If, if, if there is one thing that has come up so clearly is how small the world really is and how what happens in China really does have an effect on what happens in the U.S. that has an effect in Europe and, and you know, it, it's how we're all interconnected. That's the beauty of being on the planet is our discovery of, of that interconnectedness. And so at times we are going to be triggered, Gail, and today's a day, yesterday and today, both trigger days, right? Trigger days, as well as I think tomorrow and Saturday as well. If I look ahead at the weekend with uh, the Jupiter-Pluto conjunction, um, you know, we're likely going to have some more triggers, but I feel like this, and I'm just going to give you this little glimmer of hope as we look down through the month of April, the planets that have been creating this havoc Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto are all one after another going to turn into their retrograde phase. First Pluto, then Jupiter, that or first Pluto, then Saturn, then Jupiter. And that's going to make things ease up a bit, right? Now, during that easing up, does that mean we just stop trying to work on the problem or looking at those weaknesses and seeing how we can build them back stronger? Not at, at all because those planets turn back to direct as we get into the fall, when there are other tricky things going on at the same time. And do we really want to go back down a rabbit hole with this virus or with our economy, the joblessness? So I really, I don't see huge, I don't see a big, huge upsurge, like a, a getting over this, like, and you know, what was it I saw this morning in a was reading something about a stock market and they were hoping that there would be an upside down V, you know, I mean a V, 
uh, where we had the crash and then it comes back up very quickly. More and more, I think they're realizing that isn't going to be the case, that it's going to be, you know, this down and then down and then up slowly, right? So more of maybe a check mark than uh, uh, of an actual V. And yet we will, right? We will come back. Um, but again, a lot of how we come back, when we come back, is going to be all based on what it is that we do consciously between now and then, right? Do we just go, oh, thank God it's over and we go back to our wicked ways, if you will, um, or, you know, using up resources and, and just, you know, blindly, you know, going forth? Or do we, we take this as a wake-up call? If we take this as a wake-up call, collectively. I don't mean you or me, because I think you and me personally, we probably are quite awake about this. And, uh, but, you know, we need others to wake up along with us. And, and if we awaken, and we use this, this, the impact of what's happened here to positive ends, then we mitigate the whole experience, right? We don't have to have the house dropped on our heads next. Um, you know, and that's the possibility. It's also a possibility our economy does not come back in the same way. I wonder how many corporations look at this and go, wow, we're doing okay without these jobs. And uh, what does that do to people who, you know, may have lost their job during this period of time and are looking for work? So there are some bigger effects, I believe, that we will see over time. So one thing that we can do is ex not expect that things are just going to turn around and go back to the old way. I think we're, that, that's dawning on us. Um, but also know that you're awake now. And what, what do awakened people do? Well, we keep our thoughts and our words and our deeds in alignment with our hearts and our souls. And, and we don't allow our minds to push us into that old polarized divided self. And we use duality the way that we were meant to, which is to appreciate the whole and not just the part that I am and the part that you are as separate. And so we have, we have lots of of lessons that we can take away from this experience. And uh, I expect that we will do that over time. All right, everybody. So uh, if I do not come on live tomorrow, I will definitely post something up for everybody. So you'll know what is going on for the weekend. In the meantime, everybody take care, much love sent to you all much peace, go do something creative, find the beauty in everything. All right. Mwah. Bye for now.